Hello. So this is one of my first restoration projects. I just picked this uh, amplifier up from an antique shop in Santa Barbara. Uh, it's a Sansui TR707A. Um, this is a 1965 vintage uh, all transistor, at least as far as I can tell, uh, stereo tuner amplifier. So just an older receiver unit. Um, you can see it's in pretty good shape. Um, it was a lot dustier when I first got it. I finished dusting off the top. It looks like it may have lived with a smoker. There's a thick layer of really kind of sticky dust and seems like ash all over it. Um, probably tobacco. It leaves a nice brown stain all over the cloth. So I want to try to restore this guy. Uh, bring it back to sort of an original condition. Maybe do some recapping on it. Um, check, you know, check out the electronics, improve those if needed. Uh, but otherwise, keep it all stock um, as much as I can. Uh, I'd love to hear what it sounds like. I have a pair of Sansui speakers downstairs that I currently have a Pioneer SX780 on, and I'm not super happy with it. It's a decent amp, but uh, it's got some audio problems, and the hybrids are a little hard to find in those guys nowadays. So, at least from not from sources that I trust. So, not eBay sellers, that kind of thing. So, I'm going to try and restore this one instead. I think it's the more interesting unit to have than the 780. Uh, so, take you guys inside. The cover is held in by four thumb screws. So, we're going to be taking off now. Fairly large screws. I not quite see anything like it. It's got the pointed tip on it. But pretty interesting back in the day. Usually, electronics of this era, it's a little harder to take apart than this. It's also all metal, too. A lot of these older amplifiers tend to be wood, they tend to be all metal. It's very interesting. this thing up and pull it out. Oh, it's nasty. Okay, let's pull this out here. something that's uh, caught on the side. There we go. Oh. That's really interesting. Let's take a closer look, shall we? Little fuse holder popped off here. You can see what I mean about this thick layer of soot all over the inside. It's real sticky too. I think it's definitely tobacco. Very interesting amplifier design though. See the tuner there. A bunch of smaller circuit boards with through-hole components. And still, even with the soot, they all look in fantastic condition. Things will clean up very nicely. So, very large power transformer. Looks like audio over here. Just betting that's the stereo output. And these are probably the amplifier transistors. NEC 2SC245. There's two and two. It's probably a push pull output stage of some kind. And there actually are some schematics online. I'll, I'll try to go through them with you guys. Um, over here, got some power resistors. Uh, lots of little electrolytic caps. Actually, these look like more modern style electrolytics. I was kind of expecting um, 
I watch a lot of uh, Bob Anderson's videos. He always talks about uh, finding the bumblebee caps, and old paper caps you have to replace. These don't look like paper caps. These look like modern electrolytics and ceramic capacitors. It's definitely a high quality. Uh, there's also a lot of diodes in here in glass packages. You can see them at the upper corner there and over there. I don't know if those are germanium or silicon, but needless to bet, they're probably pretty good for this kind of vintage. As you can tell, no tubes. Uh, no bolding caps. No crap flowing everywhere. This could be a pretty easy restore. Uh, maybe just even need some cleanup. Now, I haven't powered this unit on yet. Um, I, when I bought it, the fuse unfortunately wasn't installed. And I didn't really want to short the fuse out to test it. I had to buy this fuse again. So I've got a couple sets of these. Alright, moment of truth. Let's see, is this thing going to work? Yay! Pilot light comes on. Looks like we're missing a light on the sound meter there. Uh, oops. Probably another light over here that's just out. Well, the meter came up a little bit. I wonder if that's actually an FM meter. Yeah, it is. Look at that. It actually turned on, too. Interesting. Getting signal. Cool. There is a station right around there. Let's see if I can plug in my speakers and get anything out of this. Let's give this a shot. So I've got my old oscilloscope connected. I'm interested in seeing a couple of things here. So, first things first, we should be seeing this thing wobble a bunch as soon as the amplifier is turned on. Second, I currently have it on DC coupling instead of AC. I'm interested to see if the waveform will pop up or down. If the cap isn't very good anymore, um, and by cap I mean this AC coupling cap after the amplifier stage. If that cap is shorted, or is leaking badly or something like that, it's very well possible that this speaker node will start to crawl up and will be biased. Other thing I'm noticing just now is it looks like there might be some bias anyways. There is a connection to the center channel tap here on both speakers, a 5.6k ohm connection and here oh I see, so they both have this, there's a 100 ohm connection here and that's between these two resistors and that biases the speaker so I wonder if that's supposed to be very close to ground or ground. It's possible it's supposed to be a little bit higher, I, although I would think that's unlikely. Um, you're not supposed to usually operate your speakers with any DC bias, much less, you know, lots of it. Don't know what value those resistors are. It's hard to read. Um, it looks like it might be. 180 ohms and like 13 ohms, I think is what that says. Maybe 15. So yeah, that would be pretty close to ground. Um, and then this thing here is being driven. Yeah, 12 to 3.9. Yeah, this is going to be very close to ground. This is saying this is 31 volts. This is 6.5 volts. That's like 650 millivolts. And then a 100 ohm all the way over here. And this is tied to the speaker, which is very close to ground. So it's applying a little bit of DC bias to the speaker, but not enough to really matter. Um, what's probably happening is actually this is a tap that allows it to form a feedback loop. 
with the amplifier here. So you can see this 100 ohm comes in here, sets between these two values, and then also is faster coupled right here. This is definitely creating a feedback path into this transistor, um, closing some kind of loop. It's a very odd way to do that. You would think you'd do, want to use a cap here or something like that. They probably probably looking for a very accurate filter or just decided that it was okay to compromise there or something like that. Interesting trying to second guess what engineers 50 years ago were doing. So we'll take a look. Um, so this should be, so bottom line, this should be around a volt, less than a volt. So what did I say, 650? Somewhere around there. So Let's give it a shot. I'm on one volt for division here, so this shouldn't jump up very much at all. And I do have a 10x probe, so I can go up to 100 volts if it goes wrong. So let's turn it on. Jumps a little bit. Not up. You see it vibrate just hair. But it looks like it's working. Now I'm gonna to try touching the metal. Yeah. Whoa. Ow. Oh, okay. That was bad. So touching the base knob just gave me a little bit of a jolt. Something tells me there's something wrong with that. That's not quite right. Um, and you could also see too, the amplifier started oscillating right after that happened. Sorry, that still smarts a little bit. Um, so, that's interesting. Um, yeah, let's try to figure out what's going on with that. Now, it's just the base knob doing that, or other ones, I don't really want to find out with my finger anymore. But we could certainly find out with trusty screwdriver. See if that does anything. That should do something, you would think. The other thing that's interesting too. Pull this off here. I'm betting there's something wrong with the potentiometer that's causing this. I'm betting it's not connected to the case, otherwise touching anything in the case would cause this. Sure enough, there's a ring in the back there that's not touching anything on the outside. I had it pushed down pretty far, but not far enough to conduct. It's the same deal with this treble knob, too. So, it seems like we may have an issue with this guy. Anyways, very interesting. 